Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's the Intuitive Lens on YouTube. We're talking about astrology every week and I'm also gonna do a tarot reading at the end of each weather report, astrological weather report. Man, I've been doing this for two years, almost two years. It's wild to think about, you know, but I've been thinking about cycles a lot lately. Anyway, speaking of cycles, um, new month cycle, it's September. And if you've been with me so far for at least over a month, you know that every month I have a Oracle card that I've pulled from the Illuminated Love Oracle. It's a lovely deck. Here's what we got for the month of September. Embodied brilliance. There we go. It has been designed by creation for you to shine. You are essential in the magical matrix of creation, and your unique light is here to shine brightly, illuminating and amplifying a facet of the divine upon the earth and beyond. The energy of empowerment resides within this oracle and is supporting you to embrace your body as a sacred vessel. No way. Um, that's relevant because of what we're going to talk about this week. We'll get into it in a second. Through embodying and sharing your brilliance, you exist as a living invitation for others to do the same. No longer does it serve to withhold your light for the perceived comfort of others or in an attempt to cloak yourself within a false veil of safety. It is time to boldly live your destiny. The world needs the gift of you now! Exclamation point. Uh, this card carries an illuminated intention. We could just say intention. My body, luminous and pure, is a vessel for the great play of creation. Okay. So we're talking about our bodies. The reason I said no way is because um, I was um, looking over the planetary cycles. The top of this week, Jupiter goes into retrograde in the sign of Taurus. We know that Uranus, the planet Uranus, also went retrograde... Um, last month, I think, also in the sign of Taurus. So either way, Taurus is being highlighted for us. Taurus represents the body. Not only that, we're in Virgo season. Virgo is the healer, sign of health, service, and assessment, also dealing with the body. And so there's these, um, this ties to Virgo and Taurus. I'm curious how that resonates for you. Feel free to let me know, you know, the astrology of this month is a lot quieter than the summer has been. It may feel as though we have a bit of reprieve, like there's some room to breathe. There's also a bit of luck happening because Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion and luck and our wealth, has a few aspects, even though it's going retrograde and will be retrograde for the rest of this month, along with Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Anytime Jupiter is retrograde, it has a positive influence anyway. It's just the energy of, let's say, second chances. And this Aries and Libra, North Node, South Node, axis, like the, when the nodal shift happened back in July or sometime this summer, I feel like we're, we're at the beginning of that cycle still. It's going to be here for 18 months, but I assure you it's going to keep coming up. And this me versus we mentality, I looked ahead a little bit and it's gonna come up at the end of the month as well. I'm gonna try to stick to what's happening right now though, this, this current week. Sun in Virgo, trying Jupiter in retrograde. This is that lucky, prosperous energy. I feel that we're gonna have some luck as it relates to how we feel in our bodies. Um, and with the node access with Lilith, there's a the North Node trine Lilith. Um, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I mention Lilith as much as possible uh, when she comes up in a transit. She is the repressed divine feminine, the part of us that has been neglected or um, just not given a chance. And oftentimes when we look at these aspects of self, 
we find they are ripe for healing and evolution. And so we see a transit of Lilith with the North Node in its uh, trine aspect, which is very harmonious. These are Most of the transits this week are trines that I'm talking about. Jupiter, Mercury, Node, Lilith, Sun, Jupiter. And then we got a Mercury, Kazemi. In essence, what I want you to do is imagine your earliest impressions, period. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be more, but there is more. Imagine your earliest impressions. What are your strongest feelings in your lens on the world? When we talk about the idea of breaking generational curses, for example, you, um, the energetics behind what we come into this life with. Those are some of our earliest impressions, right? Or it's stuff that happened to us as a child and that are living in our subconscious in ways we're not even totally aware. So, you know, spiritual awakening is more or less just becoming aware of these aspects and of other aspects. So I think that's what the sun trying Jupiter, you know, it, with, with the retrograde in Taurus, we could see restructuring, yes, through this pers lens of personal growth as it relates to our values. It can also mean things like our bodies, our time, anything that is physical and practical it could mean our wealth and our prosperity. I don't know about you, but I have student loans and I um, have been getting emails from the federal government and um, I just saw them. And they said something to the extent that like, hey, you're gonna have to start paying your loans back. Mine, were, mine have been on deferment. I don't mind sharing that. Anyway, and um, it's just another example. I got an email that said, hey, your loans are no longer gonna be on deferment because right, the, wh whoever, thought they, um, you know, Congress or whoever voted on this stuff to approve or not approve student loan forgiveness said, we're not going to do it. So not only was that program not approved for loan forgiveness, but now my deferment has been canceled. So good or bad thing. <laughs> I was saying that Jupiter retrograde is a, is a good thing, but I think that it's, you know, it's not going to be without obstacles, but we're going to have this sense of energy that we can move through them. And I think it's also because celestially there's a little bit less going on. So I hope that that resonates uh, with you. Uh, the last thing I want to say, actually, this node with Lilith aspect, this is a very alluring aspect. It's like passion and purpose all together. And yeah, what deeper parts of yourself are you drawn to at this time? And what deep parts of yourself are you convinced others can see? Because that's what, what creates bonds with people is when we feel that others see us for who we are, regardless of our, regardless if we're able to fully communicate or articulate it. It's energetic. Okay. Um, yeah, and then think about this Virgo Taurus, that's not an axis, by the way, they're not, they're not opposite each other, but the Vir Virgo and Taurus are intertwining a lot this month. We're going to explore those themes a lot. In the tarot, Virgo is the hermit, Taurus is the empress. They're both pretty meticulous signs, like, I think that they're, har they're harmonious together. They, they actually work quite well together. In unevolved ways, in less evolved ways, Taurus is stubborn and Virgo is critical. I think, th so those might be themes that we're working with to overcome this month. Our stubbornness and our, our, our critical self-assessment while encouraging the evolved forms of these signs to be loyal 
to be sensual, to pay attention how the body is feeling, right? Taurus is a lot about that. And Virgo actually is a sign of a healer, right? So it's about seeking out alternative methods. How can we learn to do things differently that move us forward during this time of Mercury retrograde? Mercury is gonna be retrograde till the middle of this month, so um, not super long. And Venus is officially out of retrograde, so there's that too. It's official. So let's do a reading. This is not a personal reading. Whatever shows up, shows up for the collective, which is you who is watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, this week is the last chance to get on Cosmic Awakening, my six-week course that I'm co-facilitating with a partner. Um, and I say it's the last week to sign up for the full course because we do let you sign up a la carte for individual workshops that may pique your interest. But since we're starting this Saturday, September 9th, uh, we can't go back on time and have you come and do the, the former courses. So uh, workshops go until mid-October. Surprise, surprise, until... Basically, this whole workshop is happening within a Mercury retrograde. So if you want to be working with that energy of realignment, reassessment, um tapping into the evolved qualities of Virgo and what Virgo offers us in that kind of self-assessment, alternative healing, and being in service. You can come join us and spend your time that way. It's Saturday mornings from 10 to 12.30 p.m. And this isn't official yet, but the last thing I'll say about Cosmic Awakening is that we underst I understand, we understand that... In having in-person events is still extremely difficult for a lot of people. Um, we have a few people signed in who are exclusively virtual. So we're thinking that we're going to actually switch this to completely virtual, um, if that helps at all. It's not official yet, but we're thinking about um, doing that. There's been COVID's on the rise. I hope you guys are taking care of yourself, staying healthy, making smart choices when you're out in public. Let's do a reading. <sighs> Ten of Swords, the Fool. That's nice. As the energy underneath. The Ten of Swords indicates the end of an extremely difficult journey, painful, and the full is validation that we are starting anew. So what I love about the energy of the full is that everything is new. Everything is new. Do you know the phenomena of travel? Like if you've been to a new place or you're visiting a place and you have all this energy and you don't wake up at the same time, you don't have this, you don't go and eat the same breakfast every day because you're taken literally out of the place and the conditions where your default programming can just run unconsciously. That's why it's very hard to make individual, I think, life changes. Shifts can occur a little bit easier when we're taken, well, you know, I'll say taken out of our comfort zone taken out of our day-to-day -day routine, which, by the way, is Virgo ruled. And Taurus. See, there's a lot to unpack here um, regarding those signs. And... Um, I do think that we're... It's not going to be without obstacles or challenges. I think there's going to be a lot of questioning, but I do think we're going to be learning just how to communicate better, how to um, connect with our own subconscious in, a, in deeper ways to reveal sort of what conditioning is there and how to work with that. All right, so we have the Page of Cups in our reading. Here we go. Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Two of Pentacles in reverse, 
Eight of Wands in reverse, Queen of Wands, uh, Nine of Pentacles, that's nice. Ten of Pentacles in reverse, Ten of Cups, Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, so first of all, it appears as though we're very much in the physical pentacle, earthy place. That makes sense. Virgo and Virgo and Taurus, both earth signs. The fixed and mutable earth. So what are we nurturing and how are we adapting? Nurturing and adapting. Okay. I see nurturance with the Queen of Pentacles. She's showing up here in the reverse. This simply indicates that there's like an unbalance between, you know, certain priorities. So I'll say like, you know, work and home life. But really it could be whatever two major aspects of your life feel profound and relevant here. I will say that there's like this sense, uh, because I see the Page of Cups and the Two of Pentacles flanking the Queen of Pentacles, I'll show you. Well, there's our queen. There's the nurturance, right? Okay, yeah. Seeing it this way, it kind of tells me that nurturing a balance between literally like feeling like overwhelm. This is a card of prioritization. This is a card of choices. This card feels to me when I look at it as if it's um, we're, we're, we're trying to prioritize how we're spending our time and where our resources are going. Our hands are literally full, too full maybe to spend as much time as we want with the energy of the Page of Cups, which is the energy of surprise, youthfulness, playfulness, also deeper intuition. When we have too much stuff going on physically, it's hard to make time to meditate, for example. Are you working all the time? Are you exhausted all the time? It's gonna be harder to tap into that. There is, I think, a need for some radical rest here. This was a message I was getting even last month or you know months ago about this time of year for myself personally, but I think it's true, it's Virgo season. It's just what it is. We're really at the, it's almost harvest season and we're literally at, at the end of a, such a busy time in collective human life, not to mention all the ways that the world just feels like it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. So I get it, I do get it. Um, we just finished the full moon in Pisces, you remember that? This card was showing a lot, but it was, it was trending for the full moon in Pisces. And so the other thing I wanna say about this just is um, try and be open, receptive, to what's coming for you. Um, the more you practice meditation, visualization, connecting with your guides, it does become easier. And I think that we can tend to overthink it a little bit. Um, I know this, I've done it. I've, I've seen lots of people do it. I've guided visualizations, meditations, by the way, Great time to mention free group Reiki on Meetup. It's happening Monday night is the next one. So I guess Labor Day night, night 9 p.m. if you wanna join us. Where I do guide Reiki healing for the group and visualization meditation, whatever we're called to do at that time, I'm basically just sort of channeling for the group and seeing what wants to come through. This is hard to do when we're overanalyzing, which again is Virgo. Right? Other aspects of Taurus, you know, wealth, wanting to be abundant. I see that here in this next line, the Nine of uh, Pentacles. This is about achieving some sense of wealth. Um, there's a reminder here. This is sort of like an isolated message. I don't know who it's for, but Jupiter retrograde is not, it's said that it's not necessarily the best time to make 
decisions to move anywhere, like permanently. Um, because Jupiter rules the ninth house, it is the house of journey, wisdom, philosophies. Overall, this is not a time to be just changing your mind in some extreme sort of way, okay? This Jupiter retrograde as a second chance energy and as a lucky and a prosperous energy reveals things to us. And I think that <laughs> Queen of Wands, Nine of Pentacles, you could take it too far. You know, this nurturance feels a little bit luxurious. It feels a little bit like, um, I don't really have other words to describe it right now, but just like, it's, it can be taken too far, I think. So just be aware of that. And then in this final line, 10 of pentacles in reverse, 10 of cups, that's two tens. We're clearing some sort of cycle. Well, actually three, we have three tens, the 10 of swords right here in the underneath. All that's missing is the 10 of wands, which I have no problems with that. 10 of wands is about feeling burdened or, or you know, this idea of like, we have been doing too much and our spirit is tired. I feel like our spirit is fine. I feel like it's working. This queen of wands in the center. This reading, if it resonates for you, is, is saying, we're being shown ways that our spirit is working, our subconscious is working. We know how our mind is working and we're aware of that. We have this awareness. That is all that it is. Consciousness is awareness. And so I think you know just how magical you are because you're aware of how, are, how you're co-creating with the universe. Um, and, and that, so going back to this, um, what I'll say, how are, you know, this earlier question of how are we adapting? If it's a question of nurturance and adapting. Ten of Cups and Ten of Pentacles in the reverse. Uh, and the Seven of Pentacles. I'm going to pop them up for you. We're seeking happiness, the ultimate happiness, contentment. And there might be a moment this month, this week, that you realize it's not where you thought it was, that what was given to you, what has been passed down to you, is actually prohibiting you, slowing you down from achieving true happiness. And so the seven of pentacles I like, it's the energy of assessment. And it's about like, man, I've put all this work into this, but is this really getting me where I wanna go? You know, it's taking a step back to look at what we've created and what we wanna do next. What I love about this sentence, of this like three card little sentence here, it's really giving me this idea that you may have realized that money and wealth, materialism is not ultimate happiness. Just because you get the house, you know, or you, you know, whatever this means for you physically, there is a house on here and this represents generational wealth as well. That relationships really are what's important here and it's not about what it is that you have. What you have comes last. What you have comes last in the structure of be, do, have when it comes to manifestation. Having it comes last. Sometimes we get it backwards. We think that if I had the tools, if I had the money, then I could do the things I really wanted to do in order to be who I want to be. It's backwards. Be who you are. It's in there, it's in there for you. I have this written on my board because it's really important to remind ourselves. If you didn't have what it takes, you wouldn't have the desire. What do we know about desire? It's the first thing. So sure, you want things. You may, you know, you may want to have things. It's very Taurus. This statement, if you didn't have what it takes, you wouldn't have the desire tells us that because we have the desire, we have it within us. 
we have to look into our subconscious, our, a deeper part of ourselves, and remove any stories that tell us that we can't have those things. You can. You can be the way you want to be. It's actually so true, so beautifully true. But sometimes our stories that we tell ourselves or that other people have told us, the way we are you know, collectively told of a certain way to be is the right way to be, we're questioning all of that stuff now. So here's the other part of this quote. If you weren't ready, you wouldn't have the opportunity. I'm not sure if, how that's relevant here, to be honest with you. But I just wanted to finish that quote because it's like one of my favorite things that I have written on my board. Because when I get an invitation to go do something, I'll think about, is there a voice inside of me that is saying that I'm not ready? Is this something that I still desire? Because if it, it is, and the opportunity is there, not only do I have what it takes, but I'm ready. So, best of luck to you on this brand new adventure. I can't wait to see where this month goes. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would love to hear from you. So introduce yourself in the comments below. You can also reach me on Instagram um, at the intuitive lens, the dot intuitive lens. And I think that's it. There's, there'll be a link down below to the recommended listening and a link to register for Cosmic Awakening if that's what you want to do. So thanks so much and I'll see you later.